Cutting and bulking cycles are common in the world of bodybuilding. During a bulk, you purposely eat more to fuel training and muscle growth. But does it actually make sense to have bulking cycles for faster muscle growth? Or is a bulk simply setting you up for unnecessary fat gain? In this video, I will discuss the science behind lean bulking. I will also give you 4 practical tips that you can use to lean bulk while minimizing fat gain. To understand why lean bulking can be beneficial for muscle growth, we first need to understand the muscle growth basics. Because contrary to popular belief, it is possible to gain muscle while losing fat. A recent research review supports this. As long as you progressively overload your training, consume enough protein and have good sleep, it is possible to build muscle in a calorie deficit. But unless you are a beginner trainee or come from a training break, the muscle growth progress you will make in a calorie deficit is quite slow. This is because a calorie deficit puts you in a suboptimal environment for muscle growth. Gaining muscle is an energy intensive process. If you are in a calorie deficit, your body does not have enough energy to optimize anabolic processes. This is why research shows that muscle protein synthesis, which is the process through which muscle growth occurs, is decreased if you are in a calorie deficit. The purpose of a lean bulk is to make sure that you eat enough so that your body does have the energy to maximize muscle protein synthesis and therefore support muscle growth better. But eating more calories does not mean eating a lot more calories. While lean bulking does speed up the process of muscle growth, muscle growth is still a relatively slow process, so we only want to eat slightly above our maintenance calories to prevent excessive fat gain. There is research to support that more calories is not always better. In one study, eating slightly above maintenance calories resulted in the same amount of muscle growth compared to a group that ate 600 calories more per day. So patience is key while lean bulking. And as discussed, I will give you 4 practical tips that you can use to have an effective lean bulking phase. The first and most important tip is about calorie intake. We want to increase your calorie intake so that your body has more energy available to support muscle development but we don't want to eat so much more that you gain excessive fat. Your lean bulking phase stands or falls with your ability to maintain a slight calorie surplus, because if you overshoot your calories, you will gain fat too quickly and will have to cut your lean bulk short. If you already have some training experience, a 2019 review paper suggests that eating roughly 10% above your maintenance calories is a good target. So if you maintain your body weight at 2,500 calories per day, your lean bulking calories could be 2,750 calories per day. This should result in roughly 1% body weight gain per month. So if you weigh 180 pounds, then you would gain roughly 1.8 or if we round it up 2 pounds per month. Now, you may think just 2 pounds per month, that's relatively slow. And it is, but that's on purpose, because muscle growth is a relatively slow process. If you try to gain muscle a lot more quickly than that, you will likely shoot for a weight gain rate that is too aggressive and just increase your fat gain with no good reason. The slow and steady pace of weight gain allows muscle growth to happen without excessive fat gain. Now that we have discussed your calories, let's look into the second tip, which is about your macronutrient intake, or in other words, your protein, fats, and carb intake. Of all three macronutrients, protein matters the most. The research is quite simple. High protein diets result in more muscle growth than low protein diets. Based on the current literature, at least 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of your body weight is a good goal. You can still gain muscle with protein intakes of lower than 1.6 grams per kilogram of your body weight, but to maximize muscle growth, enough protein is important. About carbs and fat, we basically want to have a healthy balance in these two macronutrients. As long as your calories and protein are in check, then we don't really need a specific carbohydrate or fat goal. I just suggest that you don't restrict either one of them, because if we look at the research, we see that many people run into issues when they have either a low carb or a very low fat diet. If you eat very little carbs in a bulk, you likely won't perform at your best in training. This helps explain why research shows ketogenic diets while bulking are less effective for muscle growth. On the flip side, if you have a very low fat intake, this could harm your hormonal health and at the same time also negatively impact the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E and K. So after having your calories in check, make sure you consume at least 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of your body weight and intuitively balance your carbohydrates and fat intake. The third tip is about lifting weights for progressive overload. Your training provides the stimulus for muscle growth. By lifting weights, you challenge your muscles and the muscles are forced to adapt by growing bigger and stronger. You want to train at least three times per week in a lean bulking phase to provide your body the necessary stimulus for muscle growth. 
Also, when you train, the focus should be on improving your training performance. The way our muscles grow is through progressive overload. By lifting more weight over time or doing more repetitions with a certain exercise over time, your muscles are challenged and forced to adapt by growing bigger. A common mistake I see people making in their bulk is that they start doing a lot more pump style workouts in which they rest very little between sets and perform a lot of drop sets. While there is a time and place for things like drop sets and pump style training, when it comes to maximizing muscle growth, the main focus should be improving your performance, not fatiguing your muscles in training. During a lean bulk, it is also a good time to focus on training certain underdeveloped muscle groups more consistently. Muscles like calves or your arms can be trained with more volume, since during a bulk this is the time where you will notice the most muscle development. The fourth and last tip that I want to give you about lean bulking is that it's a long-term game. It does require patience. In 8 weeks, you can lose a good amount of fat, but you won't be able to pack on a ton of muscle in 8 weeks. Because it takes more time to build muscle versus losing fat, I suggest you have a bulk to cut ratio of 3 to 1 if maximizing muscle growth is your goal. So for every 3 months of lean bulking, you have 1 month of cutting. You can accomplish this by doing 6 months of lean bulking and 2 months of cutting, but you can also bulk for 3 months and have a 1 month mini cut. Exactly how you design the 3 to 1 ratio is less of relevance, but give it a try just to give yourself the opportunity to reap the full benefits of a lean bulk. So to sum up, for an effective lean bulk, aim to increase your calories about 10% above your maintenance. Have a protein intake of at least 1.6 grams per kilogram of your body weight. When you train, make sure to prioritize progressive overload. And lastly, stay patient while lean bulking. Maintain a bulk to cut ratio of 3 to 1 to reap the full benefits of a lean bulk. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have a better understanding of how bulking works and how you can make lean bulks work for your situation. If you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. As you can see, we have a new environment in which I'm filming now. I hope you're enjoying it and I'll make sure that the quality of the videos improve over time. And I really appreciate the support so far. I wish you have a great day and see you in the next video.